pool fair. Yeah, pool fair. <laughs> Whatever like, that, like, like a hot, hot dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you knew we grew up in the country. <laughs> Hi, and welcome to another sunny episode of Lucky Rock Wine Lounge. I'm Jesse Inman. And I'm Aaron. I'll drink to that Inman. You'll get that later. Today we will be sipping on some sweet summer vino. Please never say that again. <laughs> <laughs> we like to think that we do some cool shit here at Lucky Rock and maybe are changing the wine culture a little bit. But we also want to acknowledge other people that are doing some cool stuff and brands that are worth checking out. Yeah, like real recognized real. Yee yee. So we picked four brands, uh, two from Aaron, two from myself, that we thought were standouts in coolness factor. And we were gonna taste them and see if they're, the hype that we've heard and tasted over the past is holding up. Yeah, and it's also, these are not bank, uh, bank breakers. All of these are gonna, for the most part, come in under 30 bucks, most of them between 15 and 25. So yeah. that's super important too. So you know how if, uh, the product's free. You're the product. Well, uh, you're the product. So like and subscribe. We'd really appreciate it. I I'm sitting next to him and I don't know what he said. Please like and subscribe. Maybe even hit the bell notification. Bing. So you might be thinking, why listen to these guys? Me too. Well, we drink a lot and we know stuff about wine. True. That's what I do. I drink, and I know things. So our opinion matters more than yours. <laughs> <laughs> Just kidding. Uh, okay. <laughs> but, that, <laughs> but that first part is true. We do drink a lot of wines and we're exposed to a lot of wines. And I think that that's one of the things about wine that can be overwhelming is just how many damn choices there are. And so when you're thinking about summer wines, and these brands aren't just exclusive to summer. I would drink these you know, year round, but they do have some really nice summer options. And the first brand that I was gonna go with was, was Maker. Cool thing about them is, uh, I don't know, they have multiple winemakers? Yeah, so they're kind of an interesting setup. They're not like your traditional winery. Um, they were founded, and if you go back to, we have an episode about the wine business and how different ways to kind of get your wine business off the ground, whether you're buying grapes, buying bulk, that kind of thing. They kind of have an interesting model to where three ladies, they started this in 2018, and they were trying to, similar to us, trying to do the sans pretension. They wanted to have non-snobbery wines, and they wanted to kind of tell the story of other small producers mm. and kind of like Naked Wines does, you know, where they partner with the wine maker to like get their wines out to the masses. They're a little bit similar to that and they work with several different winemakers. So the wine, those winemakers make those wines and then they partner with Maker to get it into cans and they exclusively do cans and they exclusively do these uh, 250 Red Bull size cans. Mm. Again, cool thing about the brand is we know one of the winemakers, Chris Christensen, who also makes Bodkin wine. We so, called, yeah, shout out. We called him yesterday and we're like, hey, we were, we're in town, do they sell your wines? He's like, oh, I'll just flip you, I'll flip you a six pack. Like, yeah, dope. And that makes sense that you don't find them as locally because they tend, you can find them at shops but, and maybe some on premise, but they're mainly pushing for direct to consumer. Like if you go to their website, you see a lot of stuff. So that's why I picked uh, the Maker Wines. I think they're doing a good job. And I'm also a fan of like during the summertime, that's when cans really crush. And one other thing is we like to talk about labels a lot. And this, I like the label, but it's, you can tell that I'm not the audience for it. It's a women led company. This is looking a little bit more like it kind of has a feminine touch to it, but it's well done. Let's, uh, I haven't had, the uh, sparkling rosé. This is a. Uh, this was made by our buddy Chris at Bodkin, and this is a 250 ml can, and it's a sparkling rosé from the North Coast, which is basically Mendocino, Sonoma, uh, Lake Sonoma, County. Lake part County, of, part of Solano, Napa, if you can afford it. Yeah. So it's a sparkling rosé. Can mm. feels right in my hand. That's for sure. Yeah. Nice salmon color. Yeah, that's more sparkling than I was expecting at the can. Yeah, if you're, what sparkling wines go great in cans. They really do, it keeps them nice and taut, the can itself. Yeah. Um, kind of explodes out of the can. But they can only put so much bubble in the wine because it will explode the can. So there's like that happy medium. Uh, we, we, we can wines, but we don't uh, make it bubbly. And so I don't, I've never had to mess with how much CO2 you can, can uh, allow the wine to have. Yeah, and it's tasty. Yeah, it's a it's a super refreshing kind of has like that apple skin, red fruit, kind of what you're looking for uh, in a rosé. And this would slay during the summer. Yeah, cool. 
The second wine is Edith and Ida Mendocino Chardonnay. It's part of the Hobo kind of portfolio. Hobo is a brand that uh, I don't know Kenny and Lynn that own it personally, but I've heard a lot about them over the years. They've been around for about 20 years now. Yeah, I've heard he's a, uh, a good dude. Yeah, everybody and seems to really I like Kenny. I think they give some of their profits like 1% for the planet or something? Yeah, they have a 1%. It, part of their, their interesting thing is, so they have a nice portfolio of wines. So they make a lot of SKUs. And for summertime, I think they make a lot of nice crisper whites. They they uh, kind of run the price point of 15 to, they do have some expensive wines, like maybe $50, but most of them are in that 15 to $30 range. And they, uh, I remember I used to make a Charbono for August Briggs Winery, and there's not many people that make one, and they're, they do some cool SKUs. Yes, and they do Charbonos some interesting stuff. And you tend to, they're big into farming, organic farming. They, they farm a certain amount of their own fruit, which is like different than us, where we partner with the farmers. They partner with some farmers, but then they also farm some themselves. Really big into the organics. Like you were saying, they are part of the 1% for the planet. So they give 1% of their gross profits back to uh, the planet, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, there's actually, a, there's a little hole. <laughs> yeah, and, just, uh, it's in Sonoma County, you just put money in it. You just put it right, it goes yep. right into a volcano. Yep. So this particular Chardonnay, uh, you know, I, I picked it because honestly, it was right in the right price point. It was like $25. Uh, it's a single vineyard up in Mendocino called Los, Los Lonis. Los, Lonis. Uh, organically farmed, uh, planted, I think, in the 60s. It's, mm. it's pretty old vine 12 Chardonnay. Years old. Yeah, and there are alcohols too, and I tend to do like this. I don't talk this a, a lot about this on our, our uh, podcast. <laughs> YouTube. Uh, that I do like a little bit lower alcohol wines. Yeah. And this comes in, the Hobo wine portfolio tends to come in a little bit lower alcohol. Uh, and I think this one is like 12.5. Yeah, they're not hipster 12. wine, but they kind of, they ride that like, um, not hipster per se, but like um, low intervention. Call? Yeah, low yeah. intervention, yeah. and just just more of a hip brand. And so, um, you know, and they're big into their packaging too. I like the label on this one. It's simple. It's a little uh, like youthful, I guess is probably what I would say. So they're marketing to children. <laughs> no, I don't think no. you're. Okay. You're not legally allowed to market to children mm -hmm. as an alcohol producer. Gotcha. Uh, it's a little known fact. And they also don't use a lot of, at least, I mean, I'm not friends with them, so I don't know exactly their winemaking techniques, but they tend to not use a lot of new oak. Pretty lean, yeah. And I tend to like that. It's a brighter style, lower alcohol, brighter, good acidities. Yeah, I'd say it's um, maybe second, third year wood, if I had to guess. Yeah, there's definitely like a little bit of like that kind of creaminess that you get more from like Lee's Contact. Mm -hmm. Yeah, maybe it has a, it's, it's either Lee's Contact or it's like some malolactic that have Sure, done, maybe a little ML. Pretty, pretty clean too. Yeah, it's a, it's a nice wine. And during the summer, a lot of times, I like those crisper, cleaner, lower alcohol, brighter wines that keep them nice and chilled and you know, pound them on the porch. Like a porch pounder, yeah. yeah. All right, so now we're gonna get into Jesse's summer picks. What do you got for us? Summer Sippers. Uh, so Kung Fu Girl is a, it's a brand that's been around since 2016. 16? It was Charles Smith. He's got it kind of like Hobo, but on a bigger scale. No, no. I was wrong. 16? They, they Six. bought and they got bought in 16. So 2006 ish. They've been around for about 10 years. But yeah. They had been around for 10 yeah. years? So yeah, yeah, so 2006. Like six. Yeah. So, so Charles Smith, much like Hobo, has multiple kind of brands under an umbrella. Um, and this um, pocket of brands was just Charles and Charles, if I remember correctly. Uh, Charles Smith Wines. Oh, Charles Smith Wines. Um, so Charles Smith Wines has Kung Fu Girl. This was, I think, the number one or two selling Riesling in America, and it's got a bunch of 90-point scores. So they obviously were doing something right. 90 points? <laughs> Gosh dang, I say. <laughs> <laughs> That's I only drink 89-point wines. <laughs> <laughs> but... Um, uh, so Constellation, which is we refer to as like the Death Star kind of uh, brand, it's the one of the biggest conglomerates of brands and spirits and all that it's stuff. The second largest wine company yeah. in the world. And so they they bought it in 2016, which is a while ago, um, but obviously shows how um, a successful brand gets purchased by somebody who is uh, doing a good job. So I wanted to try the wines because I haven't tried them for several years to see if they were holding up. I was looking through the scores and it's it's gotten some great scores, consistent. I think it got 90 points like six, seven years in a row. Um, the vibe of the brand, I'm curious to see if it's changed dramatically since they have been bought. 
by Constellation. And what do you think of the label? Deep down inside me, I I hate big corporate corporate brands like Constellation, so I want to hate them. But then you're like, oh, well, the wine's good. <laughs> they you bought know, them for a reason. Price point's good. Wine's good. And what do you think of the label? I f love the label. Yeah, I do. Yeah, I've actually taken this label off the bottle and framed it in my house because I thought it was so cool. Yeah, and you're cheap too. And <laughs> I'm cheap. <laughs> <laughs> so this one, this is a Riesling from Washington State, 2020, and that was really Charles uh, Smith's whole thing was like showcasing Washington yes. wines that were affordable, variety. That's a very correct. smart move. Totally. And Charles Smith himself was supposedly, I've never met the guy, but. Um, on the cooler side of wine. The wine's, I mean, still good. Some, Super you know, solid. Missing a couple well, pieces, but I think I bought this for like $14.99 or something. It's like pretty inexpensive. Yeah. So uh, it's still holding up pretty well. The brand's still cool. As long as Constellation keeps their money grubbing hands out of the brand and lets it stay cool and keeps the wine good, then, then I think uh, they keep doing what they're doing and it'll be all right. Yeah, they're doing a nice job. This wine's tasty. It's, uh, it's actually not as sweet as I was anticipating no. it being. It's actually decently dry. And it has a little, little bit of that petrol. Just a little, little bit. Yeah, that you get from like German Rieslings mm -hmm. and older Rieslings. And this would taste great by the uh, pool with some like, you know, pool fare. Yeah, pool fare. <laughs> Whatever like, that, like, like a hot dog. dog. <laughs> <laughs> I guess that's how you knew we grew up in the country. <laughs> some people are like, prosciutto cool. yeah. and melons. Yeah, we're like, more like oh, river, yeah, hot dog. You river rat folks. Get a, get a, get a <laughs> hot dog. If it's summer, you got a hot dog in your back pocket. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, we're gonna go on to the uh, next wine that Jesse is. Uh, yeah. Oh, so this is this is beer beer Biernchino. Biernchino. This is a Vin Gris. So Vin Gris is usually when you um, are making a red, you might ble bleed off some juice and make a gray wine, gray wine Vin Gris. Um, I don't know much about this skew per se. But um, we have had this one before. We've had uh, we've had this wine before. Different. We vintage. had it in a. It was either our taco eating episode or our hot dog <laughs> eating episode. <laughs> hot dog eating episode. Uh, Who knew? But yeah, and we've used Durantino's wines, uh, and I slaughter their name. I apologize if, if I'm not pronouncing. it <laughs> Maricino. But you did it to yourselves by picking a very difficult. Actually, name. I was reading their website. I kind of just scanned over their about us. And I think they were going for something that was somewhat hard to pronounce. <laughs> well, they, congratulations. Yeah, success. Aaron cannot pronounce it for sure. We've used their wines and other things because, again, good price point. You know, a lot of their wines are, are sub 30 and they're real tasty. And they have a little bit of a pedigree behind them in a certain in a certain regard. You know, they have this kind of like nerdy history, but they're producing the wines that they want and they're producing them well. They're lower alcohol typically. They tend to focus on older vine. Vineyards, that's mm -hmm. like one of their big things. Yeah, and so, you know, it just has a, a coolness factor about them without, they don't have to put a snake on the label. <laughs> they just, they just have this. But like, that would be cooler if you did. <laughs> and all their labels are a little different. Um, people, because, you know, Rosés, Vin Gris, Vin Gris, are, they're pinkish. And so they tend to have a little bit more of a feminine label to them a lot of times. And because uh, their other labels are a little bit more of a masculine label. And so I think they did a good job on this. Yeah, it's super solid. They're, uh, they're somebody that I usually keep in my uh, my refrigerator during the summertime for yeah, sure. Yeah, so they pass the sniff test, taste test, cool test. Yep. So those are all uh, four fun wines, four fun, fun wines, but also brands that if you haven't heard of, maybe they're gonna be a good one to throw in your refrigerator or your cooler this summer. Um, yeah, have a hot dog. <laughs> that's the, th the running theme of today is have it with a hot dog. That's right. That was really all we wanted to do today was talk about, hey, these are some wines we're drinking for summertime. And these are why we're drinking them, and these are why you should drink them. That's right. So go get yourself a hot dog, grab a bottle of wine. Get yourself a hot dog and one of these wines, and we'll see you on the next, next episode. episode. <laughs> <laughs>